Hi there, this is Stefan Schulz, Senior Product Manager at Arshdal, and I am here to answer some of the frequently asked questions when it comes to intrinsically safe loops. For instance, you might wonder why you need a barrier isolator to protect an intrinsically safe transmitter. Typical, the output voltage, the current and power are all within the limits of intrinsic safety. For example, a 4 to 20 milliamp signal at 24 volt with a maximum power of 480 milliwatts. Let's check the ignition limit curve to see why those values are intrinsically safe to begin with. This diagram shows the voltage on the x-axis, the current on the y-axis, and for each gas group, one curve. The green area indicates intrinsically safe values for 2C environments. In other words, if all of the signal values lie within the green area, the signal is intrinsically safe. Let's plop in our example values and draw a vertical at 24 volts. This vertical intersects the 2C curve at about 260 milliamps. We need to apply a safety factor of 1.5 and so we end up at around 174 milliamps. Our signal only carries between 4 and 20 milliamps, so we are definitely safe at this end. But what if a short circuit causes a high current or if a malfunction of the source creates a surge? Such scenarios need to be considered for intrinsically safe loops in zone 1 or in zone 0. Well, that's where the barriers and isolators come in. These devices separate circuits that are intrinsically safe from the ones that aren't, which ensures that events like a surge or a short circuit will not impact the intrinsic safety. Another question that we get asked a lot is whether you need a certificate to operate a PD100 RTD in a Zone 1 or Div 1 hazardous location. To get it out of the way, the short answer is no, you don't. For a somewhat longer answer, the only thing that matters is that the full circuit is intrinsically safe and suitable for hazardous areas. So we will need to use a Zener barrier or an isolator. The applicable standard allows some components to be assessed and declared as a simple apparatus. Simple is referring to their construction. As a passive component, PD100 RTD, for example, don't need to be certified. If you follow the rules laid out in ICEN 6079-11 and 6079-14, you may evaluate and declare them by your own. Or you could ask Ashtal to handle it for you. This is a great shortcut around sometimes difficult certification processes but it means that you are fully responsible for the safe operation. A good practice when self-declaring is to limit the validity of the document and to regularly check whether the declared components are still constructed the same way. Getting pre-certified PD100 sensors will guarantee that your RTDs are suitable for hazardous areas no matter how often or when you order them. And while we are on the topic of simple apparatuses, there is actually one topic, one uncertainty on whether or not it's necessary to mark them in the field. This time, the short answer is yes, you need to. Why? Well, intrinsically safe loops are required to be specially marked. And the simple apparatus is part of such a loop. Just imagine when somebody needs to check the circuits a few years down the road, they should immediately recognize that it contains an ice circuit. As a rule, these markings must be very clear, but they are not allowed to look like an official certification label. The simplest way would be to use a light blue color or labels that indicate the device as an intrinsically safe IS or EXI device. That's free of the most common questions answered. If you have any other 
just get in touch with us. Our experts are happy to answer them all, from the general principles down to the indicate details of your plant. Until then, have a great time.